three days, two hours, and six minutes. That's how long it took me to get through the entirety of A Realm Reborn, from beginning my journey into Eorzea to being allowed to enter the isolated city of Ishgard. In those three-ish days, I had fought my way through hordes of monsters, got to witness some great yet flawed characters with actually interesting story arcs, grouped up with many players to tackle almost two dozen dungeons, fought giant imposing primals that made me nostalgic for the past Final Fantasy games, all while being introduced to one of the most thrilling and engaging stories I have ever had the pleasure of playing in a very long time. Throughout this journey, I've had my fair share of laughs, tears, rants, freakouts, and every emotion in between. Overall, this game has been a solid entry into the world of Final Fantasy, and I am extremely happy that I decided to give it another attempt. I'd like to give you a brief history of my relationship with MMOs and Final Fantasy. I began my journey of MMOs when I was around 11, maybe 12 years old, and I started with World of Warcraft. I had played WoW from Burning Crusade until about two months ago, with the failing of Activision Blizzard and World of Warcraft's general complacency making it a very stale game, I went looking for much greener pastures. I landed on Final Fantasy. After coming to the realization that since I'm a huge Final Fantasy fan, it would make a lot of sense for me to play an MMO that inc incorporates my favorite Final Fantasy mythos. Here's the too long didn't read version. I quit twice earlier last year because I decided to try and play it like I did WoW. It wasn't until two months ago I picked the game up again and after realizing I needed a fresh perspective, I've been hooked. It's inspired me to start making content on the game and sharing that with all of you. So at this point of freshly completing A Realm Reborn and moving on to Heaven's Ward, not only was it requested by you guys, it's something that I feel I need to do. I've never made a review or a retrospect like this ever in my life, so it's uh, going to be a little rocky, I think. So I'm just going to give it my best shot, and I apologize if it's going to be long-winded, but I feel like it's important for me to at least tell you guys the stuff that I liked about A Realm Reborn and the stuff that I didn't like about Realm Reborn. And hopefully, uh, as these videos go on, I get much better at it. I also want to say that if you're new around here and you like Final Fantasy related content like this, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. It helps me know what kind of content it is that you guys all like and would like to see in the future. Also while you're there, please like the video. It helps others see my videos and helps me get one step closer to doing this full time. Also if you're interested, my socials are all linked down below. Alright, alright, alright. That, that's enough shilling for me. Let's begin while you're all here. My retrospective of Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn. Make sure you stick around until the very end to hear my overall rating. Thank you. Enjoy. Like I noted earlier, I'm not really sure where to begin something like this. However, I feel the best way to start is just by going over all the things that I enjoyed. I do my best work just kind of being able to gush and say what comes to mind, so I should probably just do that, huh? What do you think? Sound like a good idea? I don't know why I'm asking you. You obviously can't answer me. So one of the first things you'll notice right off the bat when starting your journey into Eorzea is the game has a main story quest line. You are given your first quest that starts you off in your homeland city, and just this single quest line takes you all over the world of Eorzea. Having a main story quest line that you just have to follow gives you a way to progress the story and know that every time you play you're able to do that little bit that helps so much more into the long run of the story. I also think that this is what gives that signature Final Fantasy RPG feel with the ability to just have the story laid out in front of you knowing what is required of you being the warrior of light but you're also able to kind of go and mess around and do anything you want. It's a Final Fantasy game you're actually encouraged to go out and explore and learn about the world. The idea of having an MSQ being this straightforward did set me back a bit on it when first really learning about it, because I always feel like MMOs are meant to have you explore for quests and essentially mass collect and mass complete all the quests in the area. Final Fantasy doesn't really encourage that style of play, however. 
you are given the main story and all the other quests are presented as side quests that don't really have any significant significance except to give you some extra lore maybe and xp that's about it it's because of this i see that final fantasy 14 values itself as an rpg first and takes liberty being an mmo and honestly it's just a great feeling being able to play a final fantasy-esque story all while enjoying it with hundreds of thousands of other people it's the best of both worlds I also think that by far one of the greatest things that came from the Final Fantasy series into this game is the design of the job system. I absolutely love the fact that I don't need to switch characters and go through the same story over and over and over again just to play a different job or class. I can just go to the associated guild and learn the class and begin my journey. No longer do I have to start a new character, go through build all the way up to where I am now and replay the story beats. Essentially, that just burns you out in the long run. Just to be straight up, I don't have any experience with jobs at the end game. However, I can already tell how it is going to affect the end game. Unless raids with your free company are kind of similar to how they work in dungeons, where you can't really change your job mid-dungeon, you don't really need to worry about team comp going into raids as much as your team comp per boss. In my YouTube live chats, people have talked to me about how certain tanks are better for certain situations. So I'm sure that can be said about all of the different classes and jobs. So I'm imagining being able to freely switch up your team comp to be able to accommodate for a certain boss. I think that's just absolutely nuts. The only downfall I feel of that at all is I feel like it takes a bit away from class identity, but it far more than makes up for functionality and accessibility to the players. If that's the way it's going to work, I think that's the right way to go. Now I think it's a good time to talk about the dungeons. It wasn't until I started writing this script that I had to really think about how great the dungeons, the raids, and the trials have truly been. I think back on all my playthroughs of past Final Fantasy games, and I remember entering these imposing dungeons that had twisting paths and keys you needed to collect to get to other parts of the dungeon, with hidden treasures you can go out and find if you feel like exploring. With thinking back about how the dungeons in single player Final Fantasies are, where you just kind of go around and collect things, somehow they made the dungeons in 14 feel exactly like that. Listen, I'm used to WoW dungeons, which after Classic, the dungeons are pretty much all straightforward. No exploration, just point A to point B, wham bam, you're done. They're all just hallway simulators with some attractions in the middle. 14 just really captures the idea of needing to traverse your way around to find a key that opens a door on the other side of the room or another path that must be traversed to find another key to get through the main door, all while having additional rooms and pathways that are just scattered about that's not needed for progression, just for a chance at some extra loot. Just for an example, the Satasha dungeon is a whole dungeon that's revolved around pirates. You traverse through the caves where all the pirates are, and you have to fight the captain and they keep running away and then you get into like the stronghold of all that and then you have to go into two different rooms you have to find the key to get into one room and then you have to go in there get the key out of there and then go into another room which allows you to start going towards the boss but while you're in the stronghold there are I believe two or three different areas you can go into that are just optional rooms that you don't ever have to go into but they contain extra loot if you want, maybe. You really get that cool sense of exploration, which I really thoroughly enjoy. Plus, as soon as you start getting a bit farther into A Realm Reborn, like into uh, post 2.0, the bosses in there are incredibly amazing. Like I, at first I think about the fight with Midgard Summer. There's two Mirage Dragons at a wall while you're fighting, uh, kind of fighting Midgard Summer, the big Leviathan. It's right around that point where you start to understand the fights that are going to be happening in like later into Heaven's Ward and the mechanics that just come from that and how mechanic intensive they are. They're just a blast to experience. I highly recommend doing dungeons in this game. The best way I can describe them is like cataclysm bosses in World of Warcraft. All the bosses were designed to be like mini raid fights and then they stopped it because it was too hard for the basic player base. Final Fantasy says if you can't beat it, you can't play it. So I think that's a great way to do it because the mechanics and doing all that and it's all skill based is very fun. 
Now I think it's time we talk about one of the best things about Final Fantasy XIV, and that is the characters. Never before have I been around this many characters that are all great. I mean, I can appreciate the Final Fantasy character rosters uh, in their respective games, but there is something to be said about how great and how fun the Scions are. I mean, we can begin with just with Chad Crid, the swashbuckling rogue who just oozes this aloof sense about him. And it really is a shock when you learn that he was the one who was being controlled by La Habrea, the bad guy you saw in the beginning of the game. Ida and Papa Limo, probably my favorite duo. They bounce off of each other so strongly with Papa Limo's old-timey, wizardy attitude where he has no problem calling out dumb stuff, all while being the cutest little potato. And Ida comes off as so ditzy, but at the same time so lov lovable and cute all at the same time. I think her and Papa have one of the best interactions at the end of A Realm Reborn. And honestly, just thinking about it, it makes me tear up just a little bit. And then later on in 2.4, you get introduced to Moon Brita, and for the short amount of time that she's around, her positive and bold attitude will for sure make you smile and laugh the entire time that she's on screen. But let's not kid ourselves here. We all know who the best character is. Come on, say it with me. Bame Raubon. It's Raubon. How could it not be Raubon? Did you even watch the ending of A Realm Reborn? If you need a refresher, uh, the white box on the top of the screen will have a link to my live reaction. Go check it out right now. I'm not even exactly sure what it is about this man that I love, but he just has this air about him that every time he's on screen, I can't help but focus on him. He carries every scene he's in. I think it has to do with his voice, his great character design, and his dual personalities. He has this strong and jaded leader of the Immortal Flames. But then, in the scenes with Nanamo, he just turns into this giant, sweet, scarred teddy bear. Raubon is easily just the best character. I love him. But don't think I'm not going to give any of the villains some love in this. Gaius. Oh, Gaius. One of the best designed and coolest looking villains in A Realm Reborn. Everything about his design and his character, his voice, is just really, really good and very imposing. And then when you get into that final confrontation with him, he turns gold. I've never met an enemy that turns gold when I fight him. And as soon as you think you got him beat, you don't. He pulls out his little pet, I don't know if you've heard of him, Ultima Weapon, and you have to fight the Ultima Weapon too. Of course, he uh, kind of gets taken down like a little bitch, but you know, taken over and played as a puppet by La Habrea. Unbelievable. But in the end, you really start to sympathize and understand where he's coming from. He wants to pilot the Ultima weapon, so that way he can take care of all the primals, and if that's the case, then no one has to live in fear of them anymore. It makes a lot of sense, but he wants to rule the world on top of it, and he's generally just kind of a an ass, so yeah. We killed him. We don't mess with evil around here. We killed him. He deserved it. Still a really good character, though. Obviously, I liked a lot about this game, but I feel like I'd want to just touch on the main points, and you can't talk about Final Fantasy XIV unless you talk about the amazing player base. The player base has been so overwhelmingly positive and great. I have never felt so welcomed into a community before. I've already told stories in previous videos of how I would ask questions, and I wouldn't get called stupid, but actually people would help me out. Or, one of my favorite stories of how I grouped up to do the Ultima Ballad and wiped like six times. Not once did anyone get mad or tell anyone they suck. It was nothing but a complete support group. And when we finally downed the boss after the seventh try, everyone was rejoicing and happy and congratulatory. That is a main reason that I'm invested into this game. The people are really what get you going and help you out and make the game fun. I mean, just look at you guys. Probably all play Final Fantasy XIV. You have all been so welcoming and very supportive in me crafting this content and sharing my journey with you. You all show up to my live streams every week, support my channel by being a part of the community. Without you guys, I don't know where I'd be in this game or on this channel. 
So thank you. You are truly the best part of my journey into Eorzea. Thank you. As you know, you can't have the yin without its yang. And Final Fantasy XIV is no different. While I do feel that the game is overall very good, it does have some pretty noticeable cracks. Before I kind of go into things, I do feel like it's important for me to give some context with the creation of A Realm Reborn. Not to go into too much detail, but this game was essentially a continuation of the failed Final Fantasy XIV that was nuked from existence because it was so bad. There will be a video in the description called Final Fantasy XIV 1.0 in a nutshell. Uh, I think you should give that a watch. Link will be in the description. Yoshi P took the helm and he did the very best with what he had. And in turn, he created A Realm Reborn. It was made in a very quick time with an ever diminishing budget and somehow this mad lad pulled off the impossible. He literally, not figuratively, literally reborn the realm of Final Fantasy XIV. I know that was bad, I'm sorry. Yet, some things just cannot be ignored. For starters, the game heavily relies on the idea of fetch quests that are not really needed. A lot of the quests are just basically you go from point A to point B and then back to point A or onto the next spot without really gaining any information or doing much of anything. And those aren't side quests that I'm talking about. Those are like main story quests that you have to do to progress the game that are supposed to be the most engaging part of the game. Like I said, a lot of those fetch quests, you're not learning anything about the lore or learning anything about anyone or anything. It's just a very strong disconnect. Of course, though they are fetch quests, it is nice that the main story quest is still taking you all over the world. You get to see a ton of new places, a ton of new dungeons, trials with all the primals, and everything is broken up very nicely, but it doesn't stop the fact that the quests are pretty much all just fetch quests with some combat in the middle of it every so often. However, the same could not be said for the, drum roll please, Horrible 100. Now, technically only 80, but the horrible 80 just doesn't sound right. I won't lie, that section of the horrible 100, it almost broke me. Now, I don't know if it was because I was super hyped for Heaven's Ward, because once I got done with Gaius and basically was done with A Realm Reborn, and then I was on to the 2.1 to 2.55 quest that I had no idea about, I thought I was going to be going into Heaven's Ward right away, and it didn't happen that way. So I could have just been looking at it and being a bit more disappointed instead of looking at it how I was supposed to be looking at it. So there is that. The only thing is I'm not the only person to have these complaints about that, especially talking with people in my YouTube live chats, they all pretty much described it as the brick wall of A Realm Reborn, the make or break point of A Realm Reborn, and I totally think it's justified. I mean, I played an additional 20, 30 hours on this, and the, I won't lie to you, I really thought I was going to quit halfway through. It feels like a big exposition dump and a lot of politics that's kind of setting up a lot of the stuff for Heaven's Ward, but it's so, so long. It's not boring, but it's just, you feel all that time, which is not a good thing. It really wasn't until the introduction of Moonbrita and the whole thing that comes along with the White Crystal and killing the Ashians, that's when it gets really good again. And then as soon as you start going on a little bit more and you get to the actual ending of A Realm Reborn, it's one of the coolest endings and most gut-wrenching endings that, that I have ever experienced. So I guess that means that even the horrible hundred can be redeemed in my eyes. Who would have thought? Not me. I guess to be honest, that's really all of the issues I had with it. I know it doesn't seem like a lot, and I know it basically all revolves around like the questing, but that was really it. Everything else was good. The combat's good, the dungeons are good, the lore is good, the characters are fantastic. 
The job system's great. Combat feels good and it flows nicely. The mounts are great to have. All the bosses are very nice and very colorful and very fun to fight and take care of. It's very rare when I find something that I really can't find anything else that I didn't like about the game. Like I said, even the questing was redeemable. I mean, look at the time constraint, the pressure that they were under to make these. There's just no way that you can expect perfection, and yet they got damn close to it on their first try. Well, second try. And even all the questing stuff that I've complained about in this, I'm into Heaven's Ward now, and you can already tell how drastically improved that is. I'm sorry if you guys are hoping for more in-depth on stuff I didn't like, but to be honest, I don't really have any complaints or grievances. So, I guess that's a good thing, right? So I know this is going to be one of my longer videos, which I think rightfully it should be. Basically just me talking about how much I liked Final Fantasy XIV. But I feel like this is a good spot to kind of end the video. I essentially just wanted to get my opinions out there uh, of A Realm Reborn while the game was still fresh in my head. Like I said before, I had no real idea of how to properly structure a video like this, so I kind of just talked about the things I liked and the things I didn't, and I hope that's sufficient. Final Fantasy XIV is just an amazing game. Aside from a few hiccups that have obviously been corrected going forward, I don't really see a way that you can really complain about this game. I honestly think if uh, I was a uh, if I was a critic uh, and had to give a score, I'd probably give this probably a pretty solid. 9 out of 10. Overall, it's a fantastic game, and I don't know how it can improve, but actually that's not true, because I'm playing Heaven's Ward, and things are already much better. I mean, look at the voice acting, the character progression, all of the character arcs so far have been fantastic. So far into Heaven's Ward, all of the cutscenes have pretty much been voiced over. You can tell just from the first three hours of Heaven's Ward, that this game is a passion project and they are doing everything in their power to make sure it gets better and I am excited as heck to get to Stormblood and Shadowbringers and Endwalker obviously but you know it's not out yet. But I guess I want to know what you guys think. Am I wrong in my assessment of A Realm Reborn? Are there actually things that are bad that maybe I didn't talk about? Is there something I missed? Did I not go in depth enough for you guys? If you wouldn't mind giving me some feedback and letting me know what the things you liked about what I said and what things I didn't and how in the future do you want me to structure videos? Or did you actually like the way I did? Just kind of off the top of my head, kind of going through all the things I liked and then talk about the few things I didn't like and that's the video. I'm very new to all this video stuff. I, I've streamed for years, but making videos and having to have concise thoughts it's very difficult. It's much more different than streaming. So if you made it this far, hit the subscribe button and like the video. Also in your comment, end it with hashtag justice for Nanamo. And that way I'll know that you were here at the end of the video. And if you do that, I'll put your name in the end of the next video. Thank you all for watching and continuing to show me the support. I'm going to go level my Dark Knight now. The best tank. Don't at me. Link to all my socials in the description below, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.